So very quickly, the first part of the instructions has to do with everything under the hood. It says disconnect the battery. There's no battery in the car. Remove the hood to use installation. I don't think I'm going to do that because um, I'm going to be able to install the condenser from underneath because I have everything apart. Drain the radiator. The radiator's gone. Evacuate the air conditioning system if necessary. Mine had a hole in it, so no. Remove the condenser and dryer and discard them. Already done. Remove the original air conditioning lines from the compressor to evaporator. They're gone. Remove the original compressor and compressor bracket. That's gone. Remove the coolant overflow bottle. I, they don't show it on the diagram that they give you. So I'm not sure exactly where that is, but I'm sure I can do that um, later. Remove the OEM blower assembly and cover and discard them. So that I haven't done. Um, and I think I'm going to do that a bit later when I get under there. Uh, remove the evaporator and cover. So that... I think can be done from the inside. Maybe I need to do that before I remove the part of it that's under the dash. Remove the original air conditioning harness and vacuum harness and throw them away. And install two plugs in the firewall. So I'm going to go under and see how much of that can actually be done. I took a quick look at it and uh, this was probably weeks ago and it looked like you had to remove a couple bolts from the outside or from the inside in order to get that um, housing there out the blower assembly and cover and the evaporator and cover so I am going to raise the lift and see what's what under there and then come back to the inside. Okay, and looking at the um, stuff that has to be removed from under the dash, it's obvious there are two bolts that go here. These are self-tapping bolts that are in from the other side, uh, from the inside of the car. So I'm going to take those off first. There's one. I get my head out of the way as soon as I get the wrench on the other. It's over there. that I've already removed a lot of the stuff. So <clears throat> I am uh, not following these in the exact order that they gave them because um, they tell you to remove the air conditioning harness and vacuum harness 
after you've removed the evaporator and cover and the blower assembly and cover. And problem with that is they're attached to the, the harness is attached to the blower assembly and the, what do they call it, the evaporator and cover. So if you remove that, then you'll be left hanging on to that while you're trying to remove these wires. So it makes more sense to me to just remove the wires first and the harness. Okay, now all this, ow, something sharp down there. All this stuff down here is attached. This is the wiring harness that goes to the starter motor, etc. So uh, you want to keep that. And it plugs into the wiring harness for the air conditioning right here. So we're going to Try and take that apart. Oops, pressing it in won't help. You gotta pry that one out. I gotta get me a screwdriver because my fingers aren't strong enough to do that. I also probably need. socket but maybe a three-eighths inch three-eighths inch socket um, to get a ground wire for the alarm system. Better back that off I think. I don't think you're seeing that ground wire. Might be a little easier. Okay. <clears throat> so this is the pin switch which grounds out. So there's a ground attached here. That's got to come off. And this plug that powers, I guess, the wiring harness needs to come off as well. things where I struggle for 20 minutes for something that ought to be easy. Let's see if I can try a different approach with this with a smaller screwdriver to keep it Try again. I don't want to 
destroy this lock on here because I don't know at this point whether I need to plug the new harness into that. This is going to work, it's just going to take a while. Unfortunately. So, I don't have any other tricks. So rest assured that if the battery runs out on the camera, this is how I got it out. Jeez. from the other end with the screwdriver. grip on the plug that's going in. That's a throwaway harness. Uh, no, it isn't the other end of it's the throwaway. I need this plug that's going in there. That goes to the uh, Starter. It's in that harness. So let's try a different pair of pliers. Maybe I should just break the lock that's on the harness I'm throwing away. Bend it enough so that it's no longer in the picture. needed for the new harness. And then the next thing is I'm not going to be able to do it with a socket because there's the pin switch in the way but I have to take these wires off which are a ground for the alarm system. So I think what I need is a 3 8 inch wrench. Too big. 
got to go smaller. Five sixteenths. Yep, that's it. Now this again, I don't believe it is stock, but it may be. The alarm isn't stock. The pin switch might be stock for the original. Um, alarm system that I think was stock on the 76 when it came off the showroom floor. Okay, so that is off. We'll put the screw back in like we always do so it's not lost. because there's other stuff connected to it. Let's see if I can put it up on the dashboard or up on the window. So right here are the two things that you have to take out. Time to change the battery. Okay. Uh, not there are two things that it says to remove over here. Here and here. I don't know what's connected on the other end, I don't, but the things they're connected to are pliable rubber. So I am going to just try and grab that and make it out. Pretty they have to come out as one. They don't give you any instructions on what to do here. says remove them. Okay. Be nice if you got a clue. Let's see if I can grip the part that is near the wire instead of the whole thing. It might give me a better grip. There's nothing that can be damaged here because. Well, let's try the other one. Okay, that's not working very well. 
Let's try to pry them up with a screwdriver. Okay. That one came out. I guess if you're to remove this wiring harness, you gotta go unplug it underneath because it's connected to something. Let's get the other one out before we go inside. under there. And they provide plugs apparently. I haven't seen them in my box yet because I haven't inventoried, but they provide plugs for these two holes. Now I've got to run some wires for um My sniper fuel injection, my um, electric fans. I thought there was a third thing. Um, well, I got to run one for the fuel pump, but the fuel pump goes to the back. So I'm thinking maybe I can use those holes and those plugs they give me, just drill a little hole in them. Put the wire through it and bring it into the engine compartment that way so uh, that's what i think i'm going to try to do there okay after studying this for a bit from inside and outside you can't reach where these are connected i can't even see it on the inside so i would have to drop the inside uh, air exchanger box I'll call it uh, in order to get that off um, so I'm going to try to drop this from the outside but I'm going to remove that wiring harness first and there are several things that need to come on there's a resistor in here come off I should say there's a resistor in here that um Controls your high, medium, and low speed for your blower. That's got to be disconnected. I'm going to cut this wire here, or this wire tie. I'm going to somehow remove this vacuum hose from the shutoff switch for the heat. It shuts off the hot water going into the heat exchanger. I will either cut that line again because I'm putting new lines on and I would recommend doing that if you're doing this job, period. But I'll, I'll cut that off somehow, make it so that it's not attached to this box anymore. And then back underneath where the blower motor is, there's two wires. That one that you can see right there is uh, I believe a ground and then further down underneath if I can get an angle on it you can see the wire going to the plug right there I'm going to pull those off uh, I don't think I can hold the camera and focus on it and show you me pulling those off but I'll set the camera up on the other side uh, focus in on the box here and go to work on it. There are a couple other places this is connected. Uh, one is on one of the bolts that actually mounts this case to the firewall. There's another bolt back under here that's going to have to come off and I'm going to use my technique of a uh, long extension so that I can put my head of my wrench up in there. And it doesn't matter really if you have a power ratchet or not. Um, those things uh, 
can be reached uh, a little long extension and a regular ratchet. I thought I'd be working mostly from underneath the car since there's no engine in it. It would be easy to stand in there, but it seems like everything is accessible from the top. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut this hose that holds this shutoff valve. And there's still, still some antifreeze in there. So now that's loose. Now that that's loose, I'm going to cut this wire tie here. And that was attached to the shutoff valve. Uh, I forgot one tool that I wanted to use back here to get those wires off of the blower motor. And that is a long pair of pliers. Needle nose. And try it with these with the curved edge because I think I can get a better grip on that. And I think I need another light because I don't want to take that one away. But I can't see what I'm doing with it. So I'm going in from the side over here. Here's the ground wire, and then underneath there's another wire. That one's off. Okay, now that we've got that, I've got about a foot long extension on a with a 7 sixteenths deep socket on it. I'm going to go in from the side here and get that bolt. I should say get that nut. It's a nut on a bolt. Get a built-in washer on it. And now attached to here. Oh, there's a condenser in there. Way in the back. Let's see what I need to get that out. that condenser on. So see if I can find the right combination of extensions and adapters to get to that. Set to loosen. Get some 
light on the subject. Now I don't have to take the nut all the way off because it's a spade type connector. You have to loosen it enough to get past the lip on that blower motor. loose from over there. I guess I'll use a little bit extra light here. Now, the wiring harness is attached to the other stud that sticks out of the firewall. And it's got a clamp on it just goes over the stud and under the nut so we should be able to take that off pretty easily and see what else is possibly connected To another one here and of course it's probably going to be a different size bolt. It is. Appears to be a 3 8 Again 3 8 is the wrench size you need, not the size of the bolt. know the diameter of the bolts that are attached to those heads and they're not consistent 100% of the time. was taking it off. So maybe it was a 3 8 Not really a 3 8 but it worked. It's probably a either a metric or a 30 or a yeah. Is it 11 30 seconds, which is rare in terms of having it? So, I don't know what this unit is here, but it's attached to that wiring harness. I think I'm going to just, if I have the Socket for it. I think I'm just going to get it out of the way. And I don't. That's probably another 30 seconds size. Let me see what we've got here. This, this is actually falling away from the firewall here. I wonder what else I've got on the bottom. That 
was a piece of some kind of packing. Ah, another bolt way down there. Okay, let's push this back on the studs and put a nut on it so it can't fall and figure out how I can reach that bolt way down under here. I can you find it again? be able to do it with this long extension. extension because this is too long and I don't think once I get the shorter extension that it'll fit in there. Two extensions. Let's see what happens when I try that. socket on there. I think I still have a 3 8 and I need this set of 16ths. Fortunist. pretty far on the bottom. Be back once I've figured it out. So I'm on the driver's side, but I think that 
I can get a better camera angle from over here. Basically what I'm doing is I'm going up under here. If the body was on the car and had all the stuff on it, there's a plastic plate. No, it's a metal plate that goes under here that blocks off the bottom of that uh, well. So you would have to take that off before you can could get in there. But I am going up. I think that's about as good as you're going to be able to see. Um, I'm going to try it with a 7 16 socket short because it's not a, uh, a stud with a nut on it. I'm, I think it's just a, a yeah. Same type of nut that was or bolt that was on the inside of self tapping. Um, that's holding it on. Now keep in mind that I have I have already put one of the bolts back on up top, so this can't fall once I get this bolt out. But appears to be room. I really can't see it, but going by Braille, appears to be room to get the socket on the head of the bolt. It is a close fit even with this. Hey, I think I've got it on. Maybe not. Let's try it. There's the bolt that it was self-tapping long. Let's see how much this moves now. It appears it's going to have to come out. core appears to be bolted in and the cover I don't know if I there might not be enough room because I didn't take off the dryer in that um because I wasn't concerned about reusing it I didn't unscrew it I may have to do some more removing of stuff here to get it out. But it appear I can do that stuff maybe from the top. Well, let me just shut off the camera again and take another look at what's What's what? 
to proceed with my next step. Okay, after examining it, uh, it might come out if I take this top bolt off. The heater core may or may not interfere. So this is a try it and see what happens operation right here. Hopefully we'll have some success. This pipe right here is actually probably most of my problem. Um, so I think I may just cut that off because I was supposed to remove this. The only thing you can remove is the dryer, which is screwed on with a fitting here. Um, and that, that pipe is keeping me from bringing it out any further. I can probably cut that pipe off and get myself two inches. In the meantime, I'm going to try to get a crescent wrench on that fitting just to see if I can unbolt it from that end, but there's no way to unbolt it here. So, uh, it's going to have to be cut off, or the other alternative is to go to the inside and remove the heater core housing, and I think the heater core will come out with that. Um, maybe I ought to try that. Uh, just so that if somebody's doing this and watching this video, they can actually remove it. Um, And install it you know with the engine in the way you, you still might have an issue so let's do it that way okay well, since we're moving on to the interior I'm gonna try and hold this steady enough so that you can maybe pause the video and read the instructions but there's a picture of the dash panel and a picture of it after you've removed some of the stuff from the dash panel. So it says remove the passenger side dash. We did that. Disconnect the center dash and pull forward to remove the OEM air conditioning duct. Discard the duct. Um, I don't... I guess that's the duct that went to the passenger side. Um, because it, then it says to remove the radio, remove the control panel, and retain the mounting support bracket. Refer to the pan control panel instruction for installation of the new control panel. We have not done that yet. Drop the steering wheel from the console. We did that before we pulled the. Uh, body off, we actually removed the steering column entirely. Disconnect the driver's side dash and pull forward. We removed that. Removed the passenger side center and driver's side air conditioning ducts as shown in figure three. So it shows you the ducts. It doesn't show you how to remove them and discard them. And remove the floor heater duct as shown and discard. So it looks like these parts here are the ones that I haven't removed yet. So we're going to work on those next. And it, by the way, it looks like somebody's been in here before because I don't think I see a floor heater duct. 
There was no driver's side air conditioning duct. So I don't know where they went. It's a good thing I don't need them for the for the new air conditioner. So we're after the um, center air conditioning ducts. So I'll have to see what it takes to remove those. So <clears throat> we're ready to take that center air duct out. If you recall when I was trying to take it out from that other side, there was a one nut that I couldn't get a socket on. Uh, 5 16 was too small, 3 8 was too big, but the 3 8 moved it. It would appear that that's an 8 millimeter because it looks like it's the same head size as this one here, which in this car is the only thing I think that's holding that center duct in. Um, I don't know if there was anything supposed to hold it in on the other side, but there wasn't any screw there, and uh, the driver's side air duct was missing completely, so it's possible that there was a clip on the driver's side air duct and this attached to it and that supported this end but there's no holes here that I can tell where you would have mounted that thing so there was only the one on the passenger side and that came out rather easily once I figured out that it was an 8 millimeter holding it on. Uh, I know that around the 70s was a time when the, they were trying to convert from inch to metric. So um, they may have put some metric screws in this. So it would appear that this defrost duct, which I, I'm going to double check my instructions, I think that needs to be removed. But the defrost duct uh, appears to be held on with Phillips head screws. Okay, we're on to the next sheet of the instructions. So, and try to hold it again steady enough so that you can pause the video and read this if you're interested. Okay, it says remove the OEM defrost duct and discard it. So I was correct in remembering that. Remove the heater housing from under the dash. Remove the kick panel vacuum control assembly and discard it. And that says to refer to this. There's the the duct or the vacuum control assembly. There's the defrost duct. There's the heater core housing. And then it says Using two number eight by half inch pan head screws, install the kick panel fresh air cap as shown. I guess it's that one. Uh, prior to final installation, mark and drill two one eighth inch holes using the kick panel fresh air cap as a template. So I hope that you can get a drill into there um, easily, but that's what we're going after next. So I'll need, and I forgot to bring my drill driver down again. But 
it would appear two Phillips head screws hold that defrost duct on. I can see one from that side. And the other one. And that's screwed right into the dash pad. Is that the thing? I don't know. Maybe that's not it. Because this panel ends here and the screw is there. That screw might be holding the louver on the top side. Because Take another look at that from that side. By the way, there's our floor ducts in here. I just didn't see them behind that duct that I just removed. That's got to come out too. That's under here. Okay, there's. And not there. Another eight millimeter. Wish they told told me that I need or don't need these screws, because it would be helpful to know that. I'm gonna do like a usually do and install them back where they came from. The other side, I guess I'll take the camera over there. The other side has a wiring uh, clip, if you will, that appears to be behind that s screw as well. Well, I went through the whole process Describing how to get that uh, defrost vent out of there. It was bolted on with an 8 millimeter head sheet metal screw type and a bracket that held these wires. So I put it back in, the wires anyway, and I'll show you the, the bracket. And where those two bolts were, the duct, and where those two bolts were. But I'm not going to go back and show the removal of that second uh, screw. There was one here and one here. This is supposed to be a piece of discarding uh, and the next step is I think to remove the heater core cover from the inside so somewhere in the instructions though not necessarily in this order it said to remove the floor heater duct and it, as usual it doesn't give you any clue on how to go about doing that um, so after some investigation, and I hope I'm not in the way here, but this is the floor heater duct, and there is one, probably eight millimeter, self-tapping screw right there, and again by eight millimeter I mean the socket size, not the actual size of the, um, the bolt, the screw. So I think once that comes out, there are clips on the other side that it will just slide from the other side. 
slide out of the other side. And then I think I will see some more bolts that are holding this heater housing in. So a heater core housing is not an easy job. Okay, there's the screw. I'll get that later. Comes down, pulls this way. It's kind of free. <laughs> Just have to wiggle it out from around parts. There's a bracket over here that was near the radio that I think if I take that out, it'll make that come out easier. Um, so, we'll go over to the other side and see if I can do that easily and get that out of the way. to be maybe a 7 sixteenths bolt and there's a bracket on the attached to the transmission hump. It's not a 7 sixteenths, it's a 3 eighths, or maybe a metric. I don't know if that bracket is stock, whether it held the stock radio in, but it wasn't connected to the radio that's in here now. And that is a 3 eighths. on that, move it out of the way. Here comes the floor net. So I'm going to shut off the camera while I investigate what needs to come off to remove that heater core housing. And then we will resume when I know. So a little wiggling on this duct here seems to tell me that the only thing left holding it in other than maybe a couple wires is the one bolt that I saw on the other side. So I'm going to move the camera over there to show you where it's at. Okay, I think I can... I'm outside the passenger door now looking in and I think I can get a view of where that um, nut is that needs to come off. That's actually a bolt, not a nut. It's right up there. So if you can see where I put the extension, there's the end of the extension, and it goes straight in going to zoom in some and then put the wrench on it and try to take that off. There's a better view of it. Let's get even closer. It's on the top. Way back in there. I have about a 20 inch extension. I'm going to 
put my power wrench on it since I have one. Take that bolt out. other side. Oh, you know what? I bet you that one bolt that I put in to hold the outside piece is probably going to prevent me from taking that out because it's holding onto the outside. And with that light, I can't see the darn thing. I got it. Now, if you hear a great big thud when I pull that off, it's all the stuff on the inside falling, because now there's nothing holding it. Fortunately, it's all stuff to be discarded. is holding it. I'm going to have to shut off the camera and investigate that. So it looks like what's holding that heater core in now, the heater core housing, is actually the heater core. And the reason it's not wanting to come out is because I left stubs of heater hose attached to it and I'm going to have to remove those and even after I've removed them I think what's going to happen is we're going to need to lift the um, I need a longer extension there we're going to have to lift the tilt the heater core housing which I think the heater core is attached to. I'm going to have to tilt that back and then lift up to get those nipples on the end of the the right socket because I had the wrong one the last time. on that. 
rose clamp. I need to do some of that further. something. There you go. Ah, uh, that's all. Hopefully. That is what is Causing me to have a problem. See that that can be pushed up now. Yep. I think what I can do now is go remove that from the inside. Do some more cleaning up of tools because I need to lower the lift and don't want to leave them under the lift and I need them while I'm up top. So there's the heater core housing. It's already tipped forward quite a bit. Let me throw some more light in there. So I'm fairly certain that we're going to be able to get it out now. I need to stay out of the way of the camera, but okay, there's oh, I see the vacuum line that they were talking about on the outside goes to this vent switch. Okay, it's free, but there are cables connecting it. To the control panel. Um, let's see if we can. There's the vacuum line they were talking about from the outside. I was just able to pull that off. I guess I broke it off. Doesn't matter, it's not used. Um, let's pull the other side off too. Actually break it off. Should have just cut it. So all of these controls were operated by vacuum on the original and on the replacement the vintage air they are going to be electric so we won't need any of that um, I'm just gonna use a pair of cutters to get rid of those vacuum lines I was supposed to take this one unit off before I did this, but I didn't. Okay, there 
there's some a couple of attachments for cables here that are going to have to come off before this thing will get out of the car. Um, actually, it looks like it might be easier to just remove the brackets completely than, than just, you know, deal with a screw here and this clip here that promises to be almost impossible to get off. But there are three, looks like quarter inch screws there that Not quarter inch screws, but screws with a quarter inch head. They appear like they'll come off easily and take that whole entire bracket off. And that'll make it a bit easier. Using a deep socket because that has to go over the um, cables and such. Sounded like a good idea, but it's attached to a vent through a shaft somewhere right here. The cable moves this lever, moves that shaft, so we do have to take that off of there. Those are push-on clips that are a bear to remove. And you destroy them whenever you remove them, so pretty much no reusing of them. So I will have to unclip that. And I took those three screws out for nothing. Okay, that clip is off. You just push those on, and the only way they they come off, they get bent. Be really not reusable. So that cable's off of that post. Now I need what looks like that eight millimeter socket again. Fortunately, I didn't put it away. I left it attached to an extension. So let's see, right in. Ah, the whole clip comes off now, but it's detached from the vent. So that's off. Let's see what comes off next. Uh, 
That's not attached to anything. Yeah, my speaker wires came out. That's okay because they're. I installed them in such a way that you can only plug them in one way, so there's polarity on them will be correct whenever I redo them. And now I've got to go to the other side of the car and see what's holding me up on the other side. The only thing left holding it in now was two vacuum hoses, one of which I've already disconnected, and I found out that it's a clever little latching mechanism on them. Um, let's see if I can move that a little bit and get a better shot at it. I probably can, but I have to go around to the other side of the car to move it. Okay, so there's the vacuum device, and it had two hoses on it, one of which, I, as I said, I already removed. And uh, the nipple for the one is over here, the one I've already taken off, that's the black and orange one. And the other one I'm going to remove now, but hopefully I'm going to show you how this is on. There's a tab that gets put on first and then wrapped around the bent part of the uh, nipple that it goes on. And once you move that around the bent part, it slips right off. Very easy to do. Maybe if I'd have known that before, I don't think so because I think it's a different setup, but um, maybe if I'd known that before, it might I might have been able to take those off without destroying them. So, <clears throat> in the instructions, it just says to remove the heater core housing. It doesn't say to discard it. It doesn't say to keep it. But as I look at the instructions, I don't see any part of the instructions telling me to reinstall it. So I think I'm going to just take this out, put it aside. Whoops, I'm still connected to something or hung up on something. hoses. At least I know how to undo them. So I can't find where that one goes to. That one's inside the housing. Guess what? That one's getting cut. in on that um, one vacuum unit that I was supposed to remove before because I was going to remove it next but I decided to move this out of the way so maybe you saw that maybe you didn't okay 
Next thing to go is this guy over here. Looks like it might be 3 8 inch. Um, whoops, just lost my light. Okay, you probably don't need extra light to see what's going on with this thing. It's just going to be uh, removing two 3 8 inch bolts that hold that vacuum device on there. And the instructions tell you to throw that away. And I just Reconfirmed that the controls are not vacuum. They have servo motors that control the vents. me to remove that doesn't tell you there's springs and a vent behind it and how to deal with those okay I'll have to figure that out See if it has any kind of instructions on the install part of it. Okay, it looks to me like there's a flap inside there that opens and closes the vent. And it also looks like you can push up on that flap because there's a spring on the top side of it and you probably can take the bottom of it out of the hole that a pin goes through. So that's what it looks like needs to happen. I might need to get something in there to pry that up because I can't lift it with the vacuum canister on the end because it's not securely attached. I'm going to grab a screwdriver. And try to go in under that. Okay, it went up. It fell back down into the hole. came out 
And I lost, no, I didn't lose the spring. So if I can bring it over to the camera, I'll show you how it installed. So this was the top. As you can see, there's a spring so that when I pushed up on the bottom, this could come out of the hole. Once that was out of the hole, it was a simple matter of just pulling it out. And the way it worked was vacuum was applied here and it pulled on that right here to turn it. So that's that. Now the I didn't bring the parts down with me so I can't uh, drill those holes for the the template. I do have a right angle attachment for a drill. I think maybe that's the way to go with um, trying to drill those holes. But the only other thing I can do, it says I have three minutes left on my battery. The only thing I can do is take out the controls from the console. So I will work on that as soon as I change my battery. The other one's been on the charger so it should have some charge. Okay, before I work on removing the rest of the controls, the heater controls and air conditioning controls, I decided it might be a good idea to get this evaporator unit out of here because it might just be balanced there. hanging it up is this I think I don't think there are any more bolts holding it on something.
feels like there is another bolt there. Okay. Should be this size, which I believe was a 7 sixteenths. That's way underneath there. Might have to get that from underneath. shut the camera off while I figure out how to gain my access to that bolt. So this is totally just to give you a sense of how I got to that bolt. It's actually a nut on a stud I believe. Uh, I'm going to try to do it with the power ratchet. I've got a 3 8 inch um, deep socket and I was able to get on it with that and actually turn it. So I'm going to try to stick this up there. Let's see if I can get it on that nut and then Press the button. It's almost there. I need just a wee bit of an extension. I think the smallest one I have in this size, 3A drive, is, oh, wait a minute. I have one that might just do the trick. It is a tiny one. Gives you probably an inch. That might be all I need because I think what I was having a problem with was that it was hitting the head of the bolt crooked. Find the bolt again. Come on. There it is, way up there. Maybe I should have just used the manual wrench. It was on there. Thought this would be quicker. I didn't anticipate getting 
having this much of a problem putting it back on the nut or the bolt. If I can get it out now. Hopefully that was all I needed now to get it out. Um, there isn't a lot of room there and the other option I have is cutting those hard lines which it might not be the easiest thing to do while it's on the car. but. something. Okay, that is just about ready to come out, but this little unit here, whatever it is, appears to be in the way unless I can, maybe if I can tilt it this way first. There we go. So, I think we've got everything, well no we haven't. Okay, that's obviously still connected to something. So is that. Jeez. It never ends. Okay, some more investigation. So it would appear both of those lines that go through the dash go under the console to the control unit, which kind of makes sense. Since that's what's controlling the air conditioner. So now's the point where we have to take console out and the controls out. Okay, so these screws in this console cover have been out a million times and they don't work as well as they should. But uh, this is what it is.
four screws holding it on, one in each corner. And the other thing you have to do is you need to remove the gear shift knob. Jeez. These don't want to come up. They're, they're stripped underneath. Screw. This is where the nut driver would come in handy. pressure on it and unscrew it by the press of the tri trigger. Okay, this is pretty much out, but to get the gear shift knob off, you have to take the top cover off, and there's a spring under it, and then you can take the bottom knob off. The push button is what I took off first. Okay, now that should come off except for a little wire for a light, I believe, yes. And this is where I struggled and struggled with my 74 and it turns out you just pull it out. So there's a ground wire underneath the cigarette lighter that is holding things on. And two Phillips head screws holding the controls in. I'm sure this is going to be harder than it sounds because, okay, I'm going to need a smaller screwdriver because it has a really small Phillips slot in it. Um, I'm sure there's cables and such attached to it. Those are going to have to come out. So it's a little more complicated than just saying, oh, remove the controls. They're not wireless. <laughs> there's something we ought to invent. Now, there's enough wireless stuff that radio signals are all over the place that probably just cause interference with everything else, or vice versa. So, it says that Leave the mounting bracket in. Okay. That's all well and good, but how do you get the control free of the mounting bracket? And what, there's a couple pieces of metal here, what constitutes a mounting bracket? that's what they meant when they said the other instructions for the, their controls need to be followed for this. But they were in a separate box, so I don't have them with me. I'm going to figure this 
this out, try to figure it out on my own. Maybe it'd be a good idea to take this console out. Also think it might be a good idea to take off this cigarette lighter ground. That frees that up. Just one thing less to deal with. there are two screws holding the console in. I may need to take this out anyway for the transmission. I don't know if they give me a new shifter or just connect a different cable or what have you. Screw on the other side should free that up. Again, I wish I'd have thought to bring my nut driver down. that. Now I can get to the controls. If you drop that down in the back, it can come off. So that's a help. So, what do you got here? A bunch of controls for vacuum lines that go every which way. Power supply. May need for the other one, the new one. Some more controls for the
vacuum lines. There's a three plug for vacuum lines. There's a wire, wire tie here that um, has three vacuum lines going to it. I'm going to cut that so that I can isolate those wire uh, vacuum lines and see what's necessary to pull them out. stuff here. Okay. Looks like a eight millimeter socket is required to remove that clump of vacuum lines. Isolated. Such a mess of wires, it's hard to tell where anything goes and how you can get it apart. plug some of these wires. Let's see if we can separate the wiring harness that's for the air conditioner and pull that out of the dashboard. There's a light bulb in there. get a pair of pliers and try and get those out. I got careless today and put some of the tools quickly in the wrong drawer in my toolbox and 
causing me to have trouble finding stuff. Okay, that one's off. I think all of this is part of the air conditioning wiring harness, and I think it all goes away. Wires are out. Three, four clips connecting them. And then let's see what this is attached to still. One cable. I am going to retain this here because I don't know if that's part of the mounting that they were talking about and I need to take more off or whether the mounting thing they were talking about is simply this. So this looks like it's all part of the controls and difficult to from the mounting you would have to I, th I think they mean this this all comes out but in order to get any part of this to be used as mounting you'd have to completely disassemble this I suppose it's conceivable that Part of this is used for the mounting, but I don't think so at this point. So, the next thing is to see if I can figure out if in that tangle of wires how to separate them so that I can pull the harness out. from the inside. Okay. So these are two Somehow I've got one thing wrapped around. Some wires that it's keeping me from pulling this vacuum harness out. 
hate to do this, but I'm just going to cut, since this isn't being reused, I'm just going to cut the vacuum line. sure to make this easy. I am going to have to, I'm just going to cut it. I've cut it in enough places already, and it's not being reused. Okay, so that's the interior part of all of the vacuum lines. So this was all wrapped around a bunch of wires and that's why it had to be cut in several places. I would have tried to pull it through the dashboard, but there's no way this will fit through the hole that's in the dashboard, so that was fruitless to even attempt that. Now that I've got that out of the way, I'm going to see what I can do about the actual wiring harness. I think that might go through the hole in the dashboard, but I'm not entirely certain because there are a number of connectors on here. One of them is fairly large. So I don't know what this brown wire is comes out of another harness, but it goes into the harness for the um, the air conditioner on the outside. So I'm gonna just try and pull it apart here. pretty easily. I think I can push that through the dashboard. So that kind of simplified the mess under here quite a bit. It's still quite a mess, but um, I know you can't see this. I'm pushing that harness up through the hole in the dashboard. Here's it'll fit through the hole. Not easily though. And with that, it's through the dashboard. So holes in it to mount the um, new unit. 
I guess now's as good a time as any to see about pulling those harnesses, both the vacuum harness and the wiring harness that I pushed out at the dashboard. Since they told me to take those and do away with them, uh, it's time to get rid of them. This is part of the wiring harness for the air conditioner. Because there's the plug that went into the dashboard. And you get up to here and they're taped to a bunch of stuff. This is all part of the wiring harness and I don't know what this is. But I don't think it's part of the air conditioner wiring harness. Big red wire. I don't know if this is part of the air conditioning system or not. It doesn't tell you. to the starter. sure what that that's got to be part of the air conditioner because it's in that same wiring harness it goes in here I'll have to look under the dashboard to see if I can see where it comes out and what it might have been attached to
goes into the window well, or I guess it's a, I'd call it a window well, the windshield wiper well. It's held down with some gooey tar. And it goes into something that's way up here in the inside of the fender. whatever it's attached to. Yep, wait a minute. Maybe it goes to where the blower motor was. think that this hole gets blocked so I think it's inconsequential but be sure nice if they told you how to deal with it this whole system. So I think that T is going to be disconnected. on that last T that I was referencing. I don't know whether you would have been able to see that or not, so I'm going to point it out again. Because <coughs> This T right here appears to be what's feeding the vacuum for the entire air conditioner system. So since the new one doesn't require vacuum, that T is going to come out of there, I believe, and a straight connection will be put in its place. This is that anti-lead back valve. Um, it allows the vacuum to only go that way. That way. Pull vacuum. So, 
I'm sure these are going to become one. So I feel pretty comfortable cutting that off uh, to get that little rest of that harness out of the way. And I guess I'm going to have to untape a lot of that air conditioner harness because it goes into here and I don't know what this is. This is all wiring harness to the air conditioner. That's all to the air conditioner. But I don't know what it does here. Spend some time on taping that and see what we got. So here's where we are with what I think I know. I say I think because they don't give you any instructions on it what exactly to take out ah, the vacuum tubes I don't think this is of any value so I'm cutting the vacuum line there and I'm cutting the vacuum line that goes over to the feed of the vacuum to the system air conditioning system and that takes off the uh, valve to shut off the hot water going through the heater core hot antifreeze whenever you turn the air conditioner on so what I've got left I've undone the tape on the um, wiring harness and what I've got here is geez, all of this stuff was in the car in the passenger compartment from here up to where it went through the dashboard so I didn't untape that this was connected here on the harness it's black wire so I suspect it's a ground so when I untape this these two things this black wire, I also believe is a ground, and one of them was by the heater mower, or the, the heater blower motor, and one of them was somewhere else, which I can't recall off the top of my head. This is the wire that went to the blower motor because it has the condenser on it and that's where I unplugged it so it's a purple wire and that goes into this which I think is a relay ah, that's interesting I 
was expecting that that red wire went all the way back to the fuse panel, which yeah, I can see it goes into the firewall over there. I was expecting that to be a separate um, connector that came off by itself, but it's part of a three-wire connector, part of which goes to the blower motor. That's probably just the continuation of that red wire. To provide heavy duty power to the blower motor. So, I don't know what this is. Where are you supposed to disconnect it? It said to remove it and discard it. How do you remove it when it's still connected to the through the firewall to what I assume is the fuse panel? of this if it's going to be it will come apart you know, if you have to untape a wiring harness to make the install be nice if they told you as much this is interesting too because there's a clip here and it's bent around the, all the wires. But it does not include does not include the wire that goes to the blower motor or the condenser on it. that goes, I'm sure that's the trigger for the relay. taped up it goes there I'm very confused Okay, I'm not sure how well you're going to see this, but this pink wire is the one that comes 
from the air conditioning wiring harness and I've taken out most of these bendable clamps that hold it in. There's the last one. These things here. And it looks like see if you can see that here right here there are two wires going into one and then further if you can see here there's this clip here I'm trying to point it out with my blue gloved finger and it looks like the way that thing is made that I can unclip these two wires and then just clip these two together because there's two wires coming into the clip two wires coming out but those wires become one under here and after I see if I can unclip that right here and that light's not helping me because it's shining in my eyes Let's see if I can put it somewhere else there's not enough metal in this car well it'll mount on the steering box See if that I must have moved the camera because I can't see the Let's try to keep this out of the way. That's the wiring harness for the starter. So we're looking at right here. And this appears to come right out of the fuse box. So this looks like it's going to be tricky to undo this because you got them going in opposite directions. The clips. Opposite directions. Going into so you have to lift both of the tabs up at once because, or do I? Maybe I can get them off one at a time. I'm thinking if I pull that clip off. This might have been easier to do from the top, but I had to come underneath to see what was going on, to see if this was even possible. starting to come out. Okay, so that one's out. The other one I've never seen any arrangement like this before. The other one starting to come out. It's out. Now that is what I was trying to show you.
position the light. I'm going to show you this better up top once I pull it out, but that frees up the wiring harness and it leaves me with two clips move the light again leaves me with these two clips and right here Let's see if I can zoom in on those those two clips and those two clips look like they're made that they can go together and my camera's running out of battery I'm going to try to squeeze these together with a pair of pliers before I run out of battery. But that's what I'm doing is squeezing these together. And if I run out of battery, that's where I was. And that's what I did. There. And they're together. So, what I've done is, there were two wires going in on one side, two wires coming out on the other. Both of those wires went to the wiring harness for the air conditioner. And I took that clip off and plugged these two together so everything else in the car ought to be intact. So this mess of wires is the original equipment OEM uh, air conditioning wiring harness and yesterday when I was trying to remove it because they told me to remove it and discard it I was having trouble because everything was loose except this red wire so today I tracked this red wire down after reviewing the uh, instructions yesterday I tracked this down to near the fuse box but underneath in the engine compartment and it has a strange looking connector on it two wires are coming out and there's two wires coming in but one's a male and one's a female on this and one of the wires coming in is male a female and the other one's a male on the other side so in order to take this off and it was a bit tricky because you had to pry up this little oops yeah this little this little end and pull that out and likewise on the other one you had to pry up an end like this and pull this out once you got that apart because there was one male and one female you could plug them together and you've effectively removed this wiring harness from the car and you basically made it um, s still be wired correctly because those two shared these connectors at least that's my theory <laughs> um, Yes, actually, I, I understand how it works now. It got fed in on one of the two wires. Okay, current got fed in. Let's just say for 
argument's sake that it was fed in on this wire. I'm sorry, on this this plug that goes to this wire. Well, then it would come right back up this other wire and go out to the other wire that was plugged into this, as well as continue on down this wire to the wiring harness for the um, the original air conditioning wiring harness. So here's the way those two wires were connected. I don't know if this is original equipment or not, but again this specialized connector that allowed me to just take this off and plug the two ends that were in here together, thus eliminating the original equipment wiring harness. Whether it was original equipment or not, I couldn't vouch for it, but uh, at any rate, it's out. And I determined in looking at the instructions yesterday that the new air conditioner is going to get its power from a line, a wire, attached directly to the battery. And I would think that there's a relay in there that um, only connects the power once you've turned the air conditioner on and or uh, you've got um, the car started or ignition wiring, uh, you know, hot on with the ignition on. That probably triggers a relay and then the relay brings in that power from the battery.